All right, here we go. After over a year and a half in, in works and after major orthopedic surgery and a little tiny global pandemic, the butler's pantry is finally complete. Uh, all the caulk, all the touch up, everything. So let's, let's talk about where this started. Now, originally this was a closet in um, a bedroom. Well, when we converted the bedroom into um, our dining room, then we converted the closet here into, into the butler's pantry and started that process. And it took, it took a little bit. It took some, some work with the wall. I built the lower cabinet and then the up, upper cabinets. I built all of the doors, all of the shelving, um, and then uh, painted everything. After I painted it, I went ahead and put the glass in the doors and got everything installed with the granite being the last little piece. Let me actually go through uh, the, the last bit of the build video now and, and kind of show you uh, from what we just talked about and the, the last part of it, and then I'll give you a, a full tour of the pantry itself. And then for the big shelves, um, for these longer ones, I'm actually gonna put a uh, poplar on both sides, um, an inch and a half, and then I'm gonna put a half inch strip um, right there, a nice spline in the middle. Like so. I'm not as proud of this glue up as you might think. <laughs> I ran out of plywood and uh, I really wanna get these shelves in, so instead of going and buying a whole new sheet for one shelf, I have pieced one together out of uh, some, some of the extra three quarters, some of the cutoffs. And uh, I'm not real worried about this seam in the middle of the shelf um, because I've got this piece on, on this end and then over on that side, it'll be ripped and I'll put a piece of uh, three quarter inch uh, poplar. And I went ahead and used my friend, the biscuit joiner to uh, make sure that, that each one of these um, had, some, had some extra structure in it. Um, once it gets sanded and painted, nobody will ever know except for me. And it only bugs me a little bit, but it, it doesn't take away from the structure of the shelf. I was cutting a notch and my bandsaw made a funny noise. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Nail. Yeah. Shit. Well, I got out the hacksaw to finish the cut, and um, doesn't look too bad. I just nicked it just slightly. Um, looks like I, I popped two teeth on, on the bandsaw blade, so I'm okay with two teeth. Just real quick, like. Hmm. This one time, I'm going to consider it problem solving. Not screwing up. Problem solving. So on the plywood shelves, I went ahead and put a piece of a three quarter inch poplar as that hardwood band. Now you could get away with a quarter inch or even a half inch, it wouldn't matter. Um, I don't have good luck with iron on <laughs> and it's paint grade. Um, I really like putting a nice three quarter, gluing it and then uh, shooting some nails in it uh, for structure uh, and dings and dents and things. But one of the nice things to do on this is this corner. Now you can round it over with sandpaper, but sometimes that creates divots. Um, I don't like to do that as much. Just handy dandy, you know, edge plane, hit it once, and that's all it takes. Um, other side, hit it again, that's all it takes. Now you could also use um, a 16th inch uh, round over bit on a router or a, an 8th inch picked all the way up round over bit, but that's just a whole lot faster. I just, I reach, I get it, I'm done. I don't have to set up the router, change the bits, anything like that. So, there we go. Here's how Frankenshelf turned out. Uh, all cut and eased and ready to go in for test fitting. I think we should be okay. Let's go take a look. Well, it fits in there just perfect. All right, let's go do another one. The styles are cut to size and I'm going to round them over to go there in the uh, adjustment brackets. Got all of the stretcher uh, braces cut to length at least and then rounded over. So I'm going to go test fit and if everything fits then what I'm going to do is then split them in half. Alright, let's see. Like a glove. Alright. 
I've got the jig set up in the bandsaw that I can uh, go ahead and cut those uh, those rails the same width as the adjustable pieces that are in the cabinets themselves. Um, I could do this on the table saw as well. It's just I already have some three quarter by three quarter, and uh, doing it on the table saw they would be a little narrower than this piece. So this gives me the exact same width. And if done correctly, everything fits together like so. Now when you do go to paint them, only paint the side that's out and the bottom. Don't paint the top um, or the back or uh, the rounds. Go ahead and wax those because um, you don't want paint sticking to paint. Trust me. Really, really trust me. Ask me how I know. <laughs> My sweet wife chipping in and helping out in her painting overalls, taking care of uh, painting all the shelves during during her time off during the Christmas break. First coat of primers on. I'm not sure if you noticed it or not, but as I built the bases, there were two squares in the bottom of the big cabinet and one in the small cabinet. And that, uh, that was for extra storage. Uh, I think that sometimes that uh, the space under the cabinet behind the toe kick is wasted. And so one of the things I do with cabinets, either I'll put a pull-out drawer in the toe kick or I'll do a little hatch. And so uh, I put hatches in and I decided since it's my house, I was going to do something a little special with those, those hatches. Hatches all locked down and ready to cut. Here's the first coat of the clear satin finish on. I'm going to let this dry and then sand it uh, really good with some 220 and then lay a couple more coats on. Now I did make sure to tape off the, uh, the bearing edge because on these you don't want to have uh, painted surfaces or even poly surfaces mating up um, because they'll stick and they'll be glued forever. Painted shut as it were. I went with a really nice lay flat classic uh, bronze brass hinge. Uh, I think it, it goes well with the cabinet itself. And the hatches just kind of disappear. Uh, you don't even know they're there unless you look real hard. And each one of them has a nice little surprise there on the underside. I really needed this granite to be right the first time. So I put together a cardboard template just, just to make sure it was precise. All right, the very first piece of, of granite's in. I still have to put the backsplash to puzzle that in, but the granite's in. It uh, it wasn't a whole lot of fun. There's not there's not a super amount of clearance, so I ding the wall there, and a super ding the wall there. So I'll be fixing the wall um, shortly. I think my wife did a fine job in picking a granite that's perfect for this space. I use this handheld wet saw like maybe three or four times a year and every single time I pick it up I am grateful to have it and that I can do this myself and not have to pay somebody to cut granite for me. Well the backsplash is cut and in. I think it really changes the space. I really do. I still have to do a little bit of painting um, and touch up on both, uh, both the walls and on a couple of the doors. But there we go. All right, tour time. Uh, let's talk about it. So the granite's in. Um, I got the granite from a local place. Uh, fairly, fairly happy with it. It was, it was a lot of work. Um, so I cut it, I put it in. I got the backsplash cut, um, as you saw in the video. Um, all the touch up on all of this is done. Now you see a single shelf here. This shelf can actually go anywhere. And uh, like you saw in the second video, the um, the styles for adjusting are in place so you can put the the shelves anywhere you want right now um, because uh, we have some tall bottles oh that's not a tall one because we have some tall bottles uh, I just have one shelf in but you know the all the shelves are in 
for this as well. Uh, the one of the things that I really tried to do with the house is make sure that all of the cabinets, everything I've done from trim to to uh, the walls to cabinets all look like they were here in 1928. I, I someday want somebody to come in and say, oh my God, oh my God, they left all of the original built-ins. They left all of the original cabinets. Kind of original. So you see wear marks on the corners here. Um, you'll see the, the, the doors, uh, they're just like the rest of the cabinets in our house. As far as, you know, there, there's not like a 16th of an inch reveal all the way around. I used, you know, the old pulls and the old um, the old hinges and kind of the same style with uh, with the granite I used an, an, an older granite um, same thing here with the doors uh, that it is uh, period appropriate and appropriate to the rest of the house there the entire house was done with probably site built flat panel doors um, all of the shelves are in now these bottom shelves they're adjustable too and I didn't want them to sag so uh, like I showed in the videos previously, these actually have a face strip, a middle strip, and a back strip um, on three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood to keep them from sagging. So and as you can see here, we have cast iron and everything else in here, it doesn't sag. Uh, the, two, uh, the two hatches are down below in, the, in this cabinet. And in this cabinet, the hatches uh, again on the bottom but down here for somebody to use or find or whatever someday. Uh, over on this wall, now there's a whole separate video on this. Um, some people collect Beanie Babies, some people uh, collect um, Russian babushka dolls. We travel a lot, my wife and I, and so our collections kind of, kind of mirror that. Um, I have way too many of these KLM uh, canal houses. I, I think I'm over 150 or 115 now. Um, we also have many, many Starbucks uh, You Are Here mugs from literally all over the world. I think the, the only two continents that I don't have are Antarctica, because there's not a Starbucks in Antarctica that I know of, maybe at McMurdo, and then of course Australia, because it's the one continent um, the one occupied continent I've never been to. Um, so matching the, the, the espresso cups, we also have some towel hangers here. Now, um, the first time that we used this was just a few days ago for Thanksgiving, and we used this as kind of a buffet space for, uh, to serve Thanksgiving dinner. And, uh, so there were, there were some cup towel, uh, hanging here. Um, this, this pantry has worked out really well. Um, it, it actually, you know, I had a dream of what it was going to look like and it turned out even better and actually even more usable. And the little things like making it match the rest of the cabinets, making the cove mold and the ceiling match the rest of the house. Well, the dining room is the only thing with the red ceiling. Thank you, Pinterest. <laughs> um, but like I didn't use Home Depot cove mold that everybody else uses made out of MDF. This is a two and a quarter uh, cove and cove crown, and it was here in the house originally. So that was actually made on my table saw so that it would match the rest of the house. I, I keep saying that. That seems to be a theme, possibly. All the walls are painted. The floor is beautiful. I'm really happy with, uh, with the condition of the floor. I am going to put a, a mat here just to make sure that there's no spills or anything. And we're good. So thank you very much for following along with this entire build series and hanging out. Um, for those of you that are just tuning in and this is the first one you watch, I will link below um, the first two videos as well as the cut video because it's kind of a, a side project um, so that you can see what I did, how I did it, that sort of thing. Uh, again, I really appreciate uh, everyone watching. And if you could, can you do me a solid and hit the subscribe button? I'd really appreciate it. Thanks much. All right.